All right, let me paint you a picture. You just got done creating your very first sheet metal part in Fusion 360, and now you're ready to get those design files off to the laser for cutting. What do you need? A DXF. And so you think you'll do the logical thing and search for a DXF export tool in Fusion 360. So you go to File, you see Export, and you see in the drop-down tool that there's a DXF option. It's a trap. Don't do it. There's a much better way and it'll guarantee that you get the perfect scaling every single time you try to export a DXF. And I'm gonna show you how. What's going on everyone? John here, UJAM Custom Design. Let's jump right into it. Today we're gonna be going over how to create a DXF with the perfect scaling every single time. All right, so one of the big problems with Fusion 360 is when you have a sheet metal part, uh, the best way to export or the logical way to export doesn't always give you the results that you would expect when you send that DXF off to have it cut either by plasma or water jet or laser or something to that effect. So today I've got a part here in Fusion 360 that is a uh, 3 sixteenths thick uh, piece of A36 hot roll steel uh, and it is going to be laser cut and formed one time. You see this bend right here. Now this piece, uh, in order to properly uh, get a DXF, uh, what most people would try to do is they would go to file, they would go to export, you get this that pops up right here and under type you would go to DXF that is what I mentioned is the trap all right that is not going to get you the proper scaling each time I've had it happen to me where I send it off to a laser and the guy goes uh do you really want your part to be that size and I had to say no luckily he caught it so uh, to do this the right way every single time the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a flat pattern in order to do that we're gonna go to our sheet metal tools and we're going to click on create flat pattern. Let's click there. And now it's asking us to select a stationary face. I'm just gonna select this one right here for the purposes of this, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go ahead and click, I'm gonna hit okay. And there is our flat pattern, beautiful, very nice. One thing to note over here, I do have my rules set to steel inches, all right? So if this is, in millimeters or something like that, you're gonna end up with different results when you go to look at the DXF depending on how their software opens it. If you're doing this here in the United States, uh, having your rule set to inches is a good idea. Uh, in order to change that if you need to, this little button right here will let you select a different rule. All right, so for, uh, for this, uh, after we have our flat pattern, created uh, we need to make a sketch all right so we're going to go here to create sketch and i'm going to create the sketch on the surface that is going to be cut out of the steel all right so for me it's going to be this face right here i'm just going to click on there and i've got a new sketch and the next step is we want a projection of all of the features in this sketch and to do that, we're going to go create. And there's a little selection down here that says project include. We're going to go to project. You can also hit P to activate this. I'm just going to click here. And it's asking me now to select the geometry. If you notice if I hover over this, it has all of the geometry selected that I want cut. So anywhere I want that laser or plasma or water jet to travel and cut, it has selected here in red. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click, and it's gonna select that face, and uh, create a projection link, yes. I'm gonna hit okay. Now you'll notice that all of those lines are purple. All right, so the circles are all purple. All of the outer lines are all purple right here. That is exactly what I want. Now I'm gonna go finish sketch, and now I have all of these nice projected lines on that surface okay so 
I'm going to leave it in flat pattern. And the next thing that I want to do is I want to go to my sketches. You'll notice that it created sketch number one right here when I did that. And it is fully constrained as is indicated by that little padlock. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say save as DXF. This is without a doubt the best way to create a DXF when you are dealing with a sheet metal part. Uh, you're going to want to save your DXF from a sketch each time. Don't try to export the file as a DXF. It just results in problems. Uh, create your DXF from your sketches. And for this, I'm just going to say, uh, I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to say test, test file. Just going to create a test file here so that we can show you what happens. Hit save. And now in my desktop, I should have that test file and I have eDrawings viewer. So when I open this up, let's see what we get. There is my nice, beautiful DXF. If I wanted to confirm this, there is a measure tool here. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this to here. It is approximately 43 and three quarter inches which is the actual height of uh, this part that I was dealing with. So now I know that uh, my DXF is scaled appropriately. And uh, when I send this off to the laser or the water jet or wherever, that it's gonna get cut appropriately. And that's exactly what we want. If you do it this way, it's gonna give you the perfect results every single time, as long as your rules are set appropriately. And that's it, that's all there is to it easy as that to create a DXF. I'm going to go ahead and get back into Fusion here. Uh, if you want to close that flat pattern up, you just say finish flat pattern back to your original model. And that's it. That's all you have to do. And don't forget, if this video was helpful to you, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Give me a like. Remember to subscribe. We've got new videos hopefully coming out every week. And if you want to hang out and chat, you want to ask me questions, if you want to make recommendations on what I should design, feel free to stop on by Twitch and catch me on weeknights. It is twitch.tv slash Jilkins, J-I-L-K-I-N-S. Until next time, happy designing, everybody.